my main thing is people changing from the within. They are so focused in how do I lose weight? In reality, what we want in the body is an adaptation. So we just need to train enough to get the adaptation. Mariana Kadori is a best-selling author, an international speaker, and an executive well-being coach. She started her career as a national team rower for Brazil. Then she became a health coach who has helped thousands of people in many different countries. Mariana has developed her own methodology that we're going to talk about today called the Reset Method. This method is inside of her book, F the Diet. How to Get Off the weight, ro weight Loss Roller Coaster and Lose One Kilogram Per Week. So we'll be talking about health. We'll be talking about fitness. We'll be talking about weight loss, what that looks like, as well as this, this idea of the diet and why it's not the best thing. So without further ado, Mariana, it is great to have you on the show. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here, Brent. Yes, we, we talked almost six months ago for the first yes. time where we connected we talked about your book and you were kind enough to say, I'd love to be on your show to talk about the reset method about weight loss, weight release. This is a very unique topic for the show. And I love the angle of your book because I'm someone who spent realistically probably three years of my life on a diet, trying to quote unquote stick to a diet. And it worked temporarily, but I felt limited from it. I felt like I couldn't make the choices that I really wanted to make in moments with maybe I was with family, but I said, no, I don't want that because I'm on this specific diet. I can't eat that specific thing. And it didn't bring me happiness. I mean, the first three letters in the word diet will give you a good idea of the idea of the word itself, right? Die. So, so it's great to have you on. Talk to me. Why did you write F the diet? Where, where did this concept come from? Yeah, so I've been in the fitness and wellness industry for over 20 years now. Myself, I had many problems with dieting. When I was 15 years old, um, I want to be an, a model. And so what's happened is I decided, like, how do I lose weight? So I'm going to stop eating. That's mm -hmm. how I did. And then I decided I'm going to drink some Diet Coke uh, because it fills me up. And I'm going to eat some pumpkin. Uh, to be fully honest, I'm having, I was having a very difficult time in my life. The divorce of my parents, uh, moving a uh, city and like new friends, new school, everything was new. So it was this time and I tried to control something and I was trying to control my food. Mm. And so I become anorexic, but I couldn't realize I was anorexic. The people can think that it's very different than trying to lose weight, but it's the same coin. It's the other side of the coin. It's the same thing, but it's two sides of a coin. And then after this, I um, yeah, time goes by. Everybody was saying, you're too skinny. And I looked myself in the mirror and I thought I was fat. Mm -hmm. Like uh, nobody could tell me I was skinny because I look and was distorted my image and I look myself fat so then I start to get quite ill and um, one day I was in a biology class and the um, teacher took my heart rate and I saw there was 32 and at that moment it just clicked in my heart like I am dying I'm dying and so that day I got back home and I thought, uh, like, uh, mother, can we go and eat in uh, how we can eat? In Brazil, there is a lot of how you can eat. I don't live in Brazil <laughs> anymore, but I used to live in Brazil. And it's how you can eat all around the city. So we went there and I ate as much as I could. Wow. And, I, and I start to get better. But at the same time, later on, I put 18 kilos it was also throughout this process, I got the other side of the coin. I did have an help because I started to have some issues and I took uh, some cortisone. So it did help me to get this 18 kilos so quickly. And so that is when I start to realize I had a problem with my nutrition. I had the problem with food. Yeah. Then I start to train very hard 
and I become a rower uh, for like the, uh, training and competing in a national level. But I had to train so, so much, you know, because I, I would eat as much as I train and I would be fighting against the food. So I train loads, I eat loads, and it was just a nightmare. So well, let me ask I, you a I, question. What, when you were rowing, when you were now taking part in that fitness while eating to, to compensate for the fitness levels, what did you think about yourself at that point? Because when you were, when you were anorexic, you still saw yourself as, as fat. What did you see yourself as when you were a rower? Was it the same? Did you finally see yourself differently? I, I was fit. I was absolutely fit. I had a six pack. I was well. Nobody could see it. I had a problem with food because sometimes I would get back home and eat a box of chocolate. Mm -hmm. and, but I would train enough that nobody would perceive that I had this issue with food. Yeah. So as more, some people would know exercise and the, the weight would accumulate and we could visually see it. I was also having problems with food and nobody could see it because I would train as much as. And that's what I find interesting in my story is I had the discipline of an athlete, but I was within balance with food. So I could cover up, but in reality, my emotional side and my physical side was a mess. Yeah. I, I, I don't mean that uh, people are like, uh, the emotion is not balanced when the, the body is holding more weight. I don't mean this. Uh, but I mean that in my case was like this. So I felt after coaching people over 20 years, I felt the need. Actually, my clients told, you have such a unique approach how do I do it to share with my family, my friends? And there were so many people asking me that I like, okay, let's put this in a book. Let's structure this. And so everybody can have it and it will be freely used because it's a very holistic approach. I think it's very offensive, the word diet. Mm. And I use the F because it's offensive as diet for me. Wow. <laughs> That's fascinating. We're gonna, I want to dive into several pieces of that. The first question I wanted to ask to bring it back to the beginning is how long were you anorexic for? How long until I have a huge issue, I think was one year. Then I start About to have year. huge issues because the body starts to weaken. Then yeah. I start to have problems. Um, About one year, maybe a little bit more, but I, I start to fight and get out in this one year. Um, and usually people say that, uh, people cannot get out by themselves. Uh, in my case, I could, mm. uh, but I, I do say like, if anybody is resonating here, ask help, get the fast track, ask help and bridge this point to the next point really quickly. That's what I, I really recommend. Who, who do you recommend they ask for help from anyone specifically? Uh, I, I will not give it anybody specifically, but I, I would say like um, go to someone that work with eating disorders okay. in, uh, in a psychological way. You can have uh, alternatives, but it's very important to find a quick help uh, that will um, restructure uh, your perception about your body and perception about food. Because after all, I love food and that's why I want to eliminate diet from the world. But I want everybody to be as healthy as they can be. It. I also love food very much. And, <laughs> and I've got questions about that love for food, which we're yeah. going to get to. Because I, I personally, I work out every single day. I'm at the gym. I'm, I'm running, whatever it might be. But I love food. Like last night, I had a pint of ice cream with my wife. Like, we'll, we'll maybe have a pint of ice cream a couple nights a week. But I can do it because I'm moving, I'm lifting, I'm working out, but I know I could get my body into that next peak phase if I decided to eliminate those specific things. So I want to talk about that with you. But that, I think one of the most powerful things that, you, that you've been talking about is the idea of how you felt about yourself when you looked in the mirror. And when you looked in the mirror, when you were the anorexic version of yourself, you still saw yourself as this fat version right? I went through the same thing. I wasn't anorexic by any means, but I was very, very skinny at one point in my high school journey. 
And every time I looked in the mirror, I, I was fat. To me, I always looked for the imperfections. I created this, this dysmorphic vision of myself. And now when I look back at those pictures of me, I was like a rail. I, w- I wasn't like, you know, unhealthy. If you looked at me, you wouldn't think I was unhealthy, but I was getting to that point. So this idea of how you see yourself is so powerful. When did that begin to shift for you to the point where you were able to look at yourself in the mirror and be happy about the person you saw looking back at you? Yeah, so that really, um, the journey side hasn't started to me. Um, so I got out of anorexia. I got out of all these issues I was having. I was getting fitter and fitter, but I was not out of looking myself in the mirror and loving what I see it. Mm -hmm. I was thinking I was behind. I was not strong enough. I was not with the perfect body. I still having, because it's really a journey we think, and I will give practical tips very, very soon for the audience so they can enjoy some change right now. Um, so I, it took me years when I start to win uh, in rowing is when I start to see myself as a strong. And it was through outside validation, outside acknowledgement, when I start to see myself different. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think it's the most clever way I did. I did what I could in the age I had with the knowledge I had. But then I start to get more clever. Uh, so I start to see myself as a strong as feet, as, uh, as really a, a champion because I was winning everything. Now, nevertheless, the problem is still inside of me. And so was just when my body stopped me with fibromyalgia. So fibromyalgia, for the ones that doesn't know what it is, it is um, an autoimmune condition where every joint in your body ache. So you basically become very weak and uh, every joint is aching. So it's unbelievable pain, unbelievable. The, the body sensation is kind of, it's very difficult to be in the body and, and feel happy. So I start to go to a journey of going in doctors and, uh, and they gave me some medicine. I took the medicine. I felt like a zombie. I felt like, okay, I don't have much pain, but I'm not fully alive. This medicine is leaving me without much emotions. So I start to turn, okay, I will have to sort it out myself. I will have to work out uh, what can I do for myself? How can I help myself? And that's when I start to read all the self-help books, all the healing books. And I start to dive in a holistic approach to health. Mm. And what could I do it? And I start to see food as my medicine. I start to see uh, thoughts as food. What I pay attention in the TV, in the newspaper, in the conversations, what I talk is all food for my body as well. So I start to pay attention to everything I was consuming in thoughts, in focus, in food, in environment. So I start to get like a 360 degrees of myself. And then I start to meditate and understand what was going inside of me. I started studying about Buddhism, Christianity. I really diving in everything you can imagine. So I start to understand thoughts, body sensations, feelings. And then is when I start to self-heal. And I completely self-heal. At the end, I top it up to understand neurology. And how could I apply neurology in the body to heal quickly joints? And to heal quickly, how can I get results really fast, even though I don't have the most energy I could have? Because, you know, um, the, the old way is train harder, 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 mm-hmm. and you get better. In reality, we have a lot more knowledge than this. Is train is smarter, and you get the adaptation you want in the body. And that's really nice to highlight. We train not to get the body tired, where most of the people go towards, like, I'm going to make myself really tired, 
and I train really well. In reality, what we want in the body is an adaptation. So we just need to train enough to get the adaptation. And that can be a very different way of training. And maybe sometimes you don't get tired. But as you're sleeping tomorrow, you start to get better results. You did your job. So you just want adaptation in the body. That's when the changes are taking place on your body. It's not getting tired. Getting tired, you can even get backwards. So that's a, a broad uh, conversation. <laughs> It, very fascinating. I just want to make sure I'm understanding correctly. You were able to eliminate the symptoms of fibromyalgia, not through the use of these medications that cause you to feel like a zombie, but through tracking in a sense and mm -hmm. treating food as medicine versus something that just tasted good. So by tracking and becoming conscious of your food choices, as well as strengthening your mental fortitude, and diving into these ideas of Buddhism and all these different different religions and texts and teachings, you were able to eliminate the feeling of your joints being in pain. Exactly. Wow. I completely self-heal because I start to think of like, uh, I'm not this powerless human being where I depend on another human being to help me and I keep waiting until this help come towards me. I start to be part of my own healing. I start to see like, what can I do for myself? How can I nurture myself? My life will not be like this. I was just 21 years old. Um, my life will not be like this. I have dreams and I will achieve them in one form or another. So I start to like, what am I thinking? Am I gossiping? Oh no, am I? So I start to really dive into, and I fall in love with the process. Mm. And when I saw, I start to have less and less pain and less pain. And um, at the end of this journey, I think a, a journey never ends, but we start to, I don't have any more pain or any more symptoms of fibromyalgia. The doctors cannot believe. Um, but I start to think like, uh, what else can I give it to myself as a present? And so you start to explore food, for example, as there is in my book, in the chapter two, experience food. You start to experience food, not just eating. So if you think about uh, a plant, if you don't give water, the amount of water this plant needs, they're gonna dry out, they're gonna die. We are no different. We are biological beings. It's more that we think and we are clever and we manipulate things, we're still biological beings. Yeah. So we need a certain amount of light. We need a certain amount of environment to be in nature. We need a certain amount of water and will vary through where you are, if you have air con on or not, if it's hot, if it's cold. You have these measurements. You basically go to the loo and have a look what is coming out of you, the collar, and you, you will know the amount you need it. So you start to be connected with yourself. Then you start to eat and pay attention, actually eating and paying attention, because most of the people are eating on the go. I do understand life is busy. We have so many things to do at. But giving this little time for you to really appreciate food. We love food. So we need to appreciate when we eat, we taste it. We take everything out of the food. We're like, wow, that was fascinating. <laughs> but you satisfy a lot quicker than if we are talking here and I'm popping something in my mouth. I haven't stopped. I don't have a plate. I haven't made the, um, the attention for that food entering my body. My body didn't prepare properly the enzymes that needs. Maybe I'm throwing just um, food that really poisoned my body. And I don't even know because I'm not paying attention. So yes. what, what I see is people like, uh, if you never put a glass and you need glasses, and then you put glasses and you're like, wow, now I can see what is this. That's how it feels when you start to eat the food that is good for you. Like, 
I never know I could have so much energy. I never know I could have so much lucidity in my brain. I could uh, have so much concentration. I never knew uh, my mood could be so stable. I could be happy from the morning to the night. And that's when you fall in love to choosing nice food for you. It's not a chore anymore. It's not something that you're like, oh my goodness, I just can eat this. And you eat double or triple because you're not having what you want. You yeah. start to fall in love with like, wow, what are going to eat here that will be fabulous? You start to detox your the taste palate, like your tongue. You yeah. start to taste food properly. It's an experience to eat a natural food like a strawberry. Like one day I did one experience and I, I, I used to do it with people, my clients, an experience to eat a piece of apple for 20 minutes. I mean, a piece like this, tiny, wow. tiny piece. And so they start to taste, like what tastes their skin, what tastes their inside, how that feels, and they smell. So when they finish that, they say like, no, no, I'm satisfied. Wow. I'm satisfied. Because they enjoy the experience versus just pop the piece of apple into their mouth and forget about it. I would get groups of 100 people and they never experience food at that level. Yeah. They say like, it changed my life forever because I never experienced food. So we eat, but we don't experience food. So do we really like food? I don't think we're even paying attention. So let's let's talk about food some more because that that idea of conscious eating we could I, we could like I have fifty questions about just that and yeah. I urge everyone if you guys are watching this episode you'll see a QR code behind Mariana there okay that will lead you to Mariana's website so you can dive in more to each of these individual things we're talking about but we don't have the world's most amount of time so we're going to be jumping around so make sure you scan that if you're listening in the description you'll find links to Mariana's website as well as as well as her book F the Diet. So let's talk about food specifically because I love food and I'm certainly not even adept at consciously eating. When I'm eating, sometimes I'll be watching a video or a movie when I'm eating. I'm not paying attention to each bite. Am I more conscious than a lot of people as I eat? Maybe, but I certainly have much room to improve. So my question for you first is when you began this detox journey or, or what you call the reset method, right? Mm -hmm. Are there specific foods that Mariana just doesn't touch or put into your body? Like, is there, it, did you eliminate specific foods that some people might not even think that are harming them, but from what you learned in these books and these studies, you were like, I'm not going to eat these foods because they are not great for my body or my well being. Yes. And um, I did dive in to experience. And as I say in the book, you got to experience diving into yourself. I, if you allow me, I'm going to just get a little bit back and say, my main thing is people changing from the within. They are so focused in how do I lose weight? How do I change my nutrition? And my main thing is that's the wrong start. Mm -hmm. We always should know why should I change my nutrition? Why should I diet? Why should I lose weight to begin with? Because if we start with the how, we always gonna start and then we fail. We start and we fail another diet. We fail another attempt. And this is so, so frustrating. So that's why I, I'm gonna answer you in a little bit, but I, I think people need to understand what is the motivation, what dives them forward towards a change in their lives. Nobody going to change for another person. Nobody going to change, even though they say are going to change for you. They just going to change if they think it is important for themselves. So unless we start with within, we have the same thing as me with like a really nice body that was doing like high levels of sport. Uh, but I was all like the body was not fully held inside because the nutrition I was giving was not good enough for my body. So when we start to dive in, like, why do you want to lose weight? 
or maybe some people let's say like brendan told that he looked himself he found himself fat but he was really skinny why do you like why do i want to put weight in this case so the, in the same way, I don't want to treat losing weight as uh, you, you're going to be a better person, you're going to be more pretty, you're going to be it. Like, uh, you are pretty now, today, the way you are. You are phenomenal. You are powerful beyond limits, and you are just wonderful. I want you to know that you're perfect. Oh, thank now, you. <laughs> <laughs> if we want to get a healthier life, if we want to feel energetic, if we want to feel joy, excitement, we need a body that holds the energy that we can feel these feelings. Yes. So if you want to be the best in your work, for example, you want to be really successful, where most of my clients are really high level in, in their companies. So if you just pay attention of your work, you forget one main central piece, which is you. Mm -hmm. And you're going to pay the price as soon. Like, I hope you don't pay this price. But there is a saying that say, like, uh, people have thousands of dreams and desires. But when they are sick, they just have one. Yes. And, and that's what I don't want you to experience. So if you start to pay attention on you, like, how can I be really energetic? How can I have more? Uh, how can I have the best mood as I can from the beginning of the day to mm -hmm. the end? How people can remember me as this like good light that passed throughout and changed the day, that bring the smile in the room, that changes a good leader, that when he speaks, everybody listen and when absorb, that will come from your energy. Yeah, it's the energy you have, what you are emanating from you, what is coming out of you, and that always will come through one decision. That's why I want to eat health, why I want to lose weight, why I want to put muscles. It needs to come from a decision because life is full of challenges and temptations. Mm -hmm. Temptations are really available. These containers of ice cream an hour round and looks like when you go to this trend of a diet in the first day you start a diet someone invites you for the most tempting thing yeah yeah and that's the way it is and that's why we think we are failure people think they are a failure they're not a failure the system fail on them yeah. which is the diet unless you do this change within you're going to try things and unfortunately they're going to fail on you. It needs to come from within to be a pleasure. I mean, you can go on your phone and, and open DoorDash and get any meal from any local restaurant that you want at your doorstep. It might be different internationally, but the point is exactly what you're saying. It's so accessible to us to eat these foods that don't serve us, but taste good and make us feel good in the moment. But then later our energy is gone. Like I know certain meals that even might look good on paper. Like I'm thinking specifically of one of those bowls from, from Moe's. Moe's Southwest is a big restaurant chain over here. And I'll eat one of these taco bowls and the ingredients inside are quote unquote clean. But for the next few hours, I'm feeling run down. I'm feeling low energy. So I've become very attuned with when I eat this specific thing, I will feel this way after I eat it. So temptation is certainly all around us on an everyday basis for sure. Yes, it's exactly what you say. We, uh, we have to realize, and that's the kind of foods that I decide if I eat or, or don't eat. We have to start to eat and realize in a long term, after one hour, after two hours, after four hours, how do I feel? Because food that are unhealthy always tastes wonderful when we eat for that 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 minutes. They do feel good. I, I will not question here that like, oh, it tastes a lot better, a clean plate of, uh, um, let's say, a clean plate of vegetables with some fish or whatever you're going to eat mm -hmm. that is more clean. We, we're not going to say that tastes uh, better than uh, 
until now, we're not going to say that tastes be better than a burger with fries. Yeah. Those, those food, we are trained. Our brain is made to get us reward when we get this high calories food. Why? We have thousands of years of adaptation mm. to survive human being species to survive. Food was very rare and difficult. You have to hunt, you have to pick it. was not fully available until 1960 when we have the Industrial Revolution. Around that time is when we start to have weight problems. Yeah. That's when everything begins. It's not that food is bad. It's that we start to have highly processed food available 24-7. Yes. And that's the problem. That's really the problem. So uh, when we start to eat more natural food and we start to pay attention and given an understand of the del delay, what's happening in my body, how this body, is this food feeding my dreams or is killing my dreams? That's a great question to ask. Yes. And I think people know for the most part, well, not even for the most part, everyone knows that the vegetables and the fish or the chicken or, or whatever, maybe you're vegan and it's just vegetables and other things. They know that that is the better choice than the cheeseburger with fries. It comes back to what you said earlier of what is your why? What is the reason why you are making these changes? Because if you don't have a strong why, then it's when you're in the situation where you could choose the burger or you could choose the vegetables, it makes it that much easier to choose the burger. You we're almost forced in a way to make these different choices and to have your strong why in a way was given to you, right? Of here's fibromyalgia. You can either feel like a zombie and take these pharmaceuticals or you can pursue this path of naturally healing your body. What have you encountered when you're working with these executives, people who are busy, they're living fast lives. Like, have you encountered where some of them say, I don't know what my reason why is, or I'm struggling to find a strong enough reason that helps me to make the better choice in the moment when I'm confronted with it. Most of people don't have any idea of their why until they go for the journey I go through with them. We usually don't stop and know what we want. We usually know naturally what we don't want. Mm -hmm. So you usually ask it and people, I, I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't want that. Okay. But what do you really want? And that's where people will struggle to answer. So I think the great thing is, <clears throat> I, I love this journey that is not just about uh, getting your body in the shape. It's really about having the best life, the best energy you, you can have it. Um, the best thoughts you can have because your mind become more positive as well along the way. Mm. And so just completely transform your life for, for better. And that's what this journey, this life throw me in this journey. So now I'm capable of helping many people to do this journey. So it's really stopping and it starts to have a time for yourself, to understand yourself and to nurture yourself. And then from that, we can quite quickly discover the why through mm. some techniques. We can quite quickly get there. And uh, when people like just have a, like it touch their hearts, they have a little bit of water in their eyes or they say like, I don't know where this came from. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I got into the point. Now I got it. Yeah. It's and your really book brings them through that exercise as well. It brings as well. Okay, that's very it. powerful. Yeah, because awesome. I'm I'm gonna read the book. I haven't read the yeah. book. Yet, but I'm gonna read the book because I'm I'm at that point now, and I want to I want to ask you the question as well. I have tons of questions for you. Is it f food? Is it fitness? Which one? So this is kind of a blanket question. People listening, there might be people who they don't have the cleanest diet, but they work out a lot, right? Or they might not work out a ton, but they've got the the cleanest diet. Is one more important than the other. And I, I guess I'll let you just take this around because I'm not really sure of how to phrase the question, but can you have fitness but not have food and vice versa? What, Which one is more important if there was one? 
Yes. So I would say like each case is one because some people is um is more to to it depends the goal you really want. If you really want to lose weight, is that one thing that is more important? Nutrition will be the one that gives you the fastest results. Hmm. No doubt about this. Yeah. Nutrition okay. will give you the fastest results. Now Without you changing your body composition, without you changing, you're missing out on improving like the whole function of your body. You're missing out on improving your brain. It's true exercise. If you want a, a, the best medicine as you can have, it is exercise. Mm -hmm. So if you want to like completely change the structure of your brain, completely change how your organism works, exercise. Now, that's what I say, like, it's a combination. I always think, start from one place that is easy for you. And I like to think about stress. I like to think about how stressed you are. And then try to understand if it's a nutritional stress, if it's uh, emotional stress, if it's um, a, a physical stress, and if you know it's sleeping well. Where can we start to change this cycle? Because sleeping will be a major cause of doing bad choices in food yeah. intake. Or doing like you start, if you don't sleep well, your choices is a red proof in this. Your choices in the next day are poor. That's so, very true. That's why we need to get at 360 degrees and see the easiest way. And the biggest thing we need to get is a positive momentum. Yeah. We need to start to see the results coming and quick. So how is for this individual the main pillar that we will start to bring results? Easy. So if people like, uh, I don't want to change my nutrition. Okay, let's just start from another place. Let's just start from the place that you are ready. And people always are ready for one place. And you need to make as easy as people can achieve in the worst days of their life. And, and that's how we start to get really results because it's consistency. It's throughout time, people can keep this through a lifetime. And after a time, they start to feel like, well, now can, can we try to have a better breakfast? Can we try? How can I do it? They start to ask me. Yeah. Because they feel so good, so energetic, like, what else can we get at? And so we start to have a natural pet of joy. Because let's be honest, if I say to you, like, okay, tomorrow you're going to start to um, to suffer. You're not going to eat any sugar. And, uh, and you cannot drink uh, alcohol and you cannot eat sugar. What do you think you're going to do today? How do you think you're going to feel it? That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot to, to do at once versus what you're talking about, which is one step at a time. You feel pain. And yeah. who wants to, like, uh, we are tuned to don't go towards pain. We are tuned to go throughout pleasure. Mm -hmm. So who going to choose? You have to be crazy to choose this pet. <laughs> yeah. like, yes, let's do this. The day before, you're going to eat the whole house. and You're going to order <laughs> more things. And then you do for a time. And everything you think the whole day is the thing that you are not eating. Yeah. So I did that. Uh, one of my friends was doing a, like a, a challenge for herself. And like, uh, I, not, I, I can't eat sugar for a month. And she put it like, I want all my family and friends to do as well. And I'm like, I know that's not going to work. But I think it would be really interesting for me to relive the choices I did in the past and feel the pain. So I started. Mm. The first day is basically I was counting the hour. I'm around four hours without sugar. Let me weigh myself. And the next <laughs> day, and I'm like, I must be skinnier. I must be better because my whole focus was sugar. So every food, everything I was thinking, do this have sugar or not? And I don't need to say to you that in the second week, I broke, but I broke big mm. the, the diet. Me, with the knowledge I have nowadays, it really rebound me to the other side. 
And I start to eat sugar like crazy. My partner just said, like, I never saw you eating sugar like this. And I'm like, but I can't stop. Yeah. My body got crazy, dysregulate, and just crave so much sugar. So what do I think from this experience? That's how I could think. I was suffering every single day. It took my whole mind. It took my whole life, that thing. I was probably unpleasant for other people because I couldn't eat and I was controlling the whole lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, don't eat sugar around me. It's really tempting. Don't do this. Don't do that. And got to a point that I was just like diving into sugar nonstop. Nowadays, because there was this program, Big Losers, there was, uh, it was really interesting because one scientist he studied them for six years and the big winners, they like, they lost so much weight. Was oh, yeah. I used to watch that show. Yeah? Yeah, it was a great show. Okay, from six of the winners, one, uh, the last one, the, uh, the one that took the last place. Okay. Uh, the, she was skinnier, so she lost less weight. Mm -hmm. But she was the only one that kept the weight loss. Mm. The other ones, the winner that lost like so many pounds was like unbelievable. Like it was one quarter of the men that enter in the program. After this, what ended up happening is how his hormones was dysregulated. So he felt really hungry, really, really hungry. Like mm -hmm. I felt with this uh, sugar um, diet. He started to have a metabolic rate lower. So independent that he was eating less, the body was keeping more. Mm. So the body was afraid of that and was for their own survival. The body changed the mechanism. And now he started to feel very hungry, eating less. So he had an impossible mission. He put yeah. a lot more weight than he began the, the program. So they don't show that how the people put it back. And probably now they're really hopeless. Yes. Because, because now they feel like they are failure. They cannot trust themselves. Mm -hmm. What's happened is a biological reaction through the starvation and the really hard period he went through. Now the body is completely dysregulated up to six years dysregulated. And, and now the, they're saying to themselves, even with all this help, even with Jillian Michaels, who helped me on this path, I, I am right back to where I started. And now I'm shamed because I was looking like this. People saw me like this. Now, now they see me and they're like, wow, that guy put the weight back on or that girl put the weight back on. So it's just like people who go on Atkins diet or people who just they go on keto for a very short time to lose weight for a short time. They go on these fad diets that change all the time and then it, it fails because they want to live their life and they want to eat the foods that they enjoy rather than eliminate everything. And they're right back to where they were and they say, wow, diets just don't work for me. I can never be thin. I don't have the discipline. So it's like this revolving door of mm lose the weight, feel good, then bring it back, feel bad. And this is revolving door throughout the life of, of many and most people. But from what you're talking about here, there is another way. And, and really what you're talking about here, Mariana, is very basic personal development principles of start with why, know why you want to make these big changes. Your book talks about how to go through those changes, right? And how to, how to go through that formula to, to determine the why. It's start slow, start with one thing. Don't just ditch sugar immediately or two weeks, you're going to be eating the whole house, right? So start slow, start small. In terms of practicality, I know it's individual for everybody, but is there anything else that is across the board uniform when it comes to helping people make these physical and emotional changes in their life? Is driving them to the point that they... They have a must. They want to change as, as the same amount as they need to breathe. If they are under the water, is the same amount that they want to breathe. Like, is this fight to breathe? Is driving them to this place of enough is enough. So a lot of people lose weight after a divorce. So a lot of people lose weight after going to the doctor and the doctor say, 
or this or you're gonna die mm -hmm. a lot of people change when the doctors say like enough that's the only pet you have otherwise surgery so we don't need to get to this we can drive you to understand what is the point that make you move and that's what's gonna change across everybody that you need this clicking you need this point where like that's it i'm 100 percent sure of what i want and this doesn't even tempt me it's not even a temptation because i'm 100 percent sure until you have this 90 percent every time someone offer you something that like let's say you decided that ice cream is no a thing for you i always would say make in another way the ice cream don't take it completely um that making another way that you still have this feeling of and sensation of an ice cream a cold thing that melts on your mouth you can do with frozen banana mix mm -hmm. it with uh, uh, cocoa or um, berries and you can blend it this and you have a phenomenal black forest uh, ice cream but you're not guilty after it's great you just yeah. eat and you're not guilty but anyway you get to this point when you drive that staying still is more painful than a change very just, true it, it hit this like it's so painful to stay here i don't want to see myself in the mirror i think i am a failure i think i'm not sexy i think uh, people point to me they look at me they make fun they think i'm a stupid is stupid and that's such a painful place to be at and i don't want anybody to pass through this so it's just uh, let's put a practical thing that i want uh, since the beginning i thought that the change is within so i have a really really simple exercise okay i, want, hear it. I want people to to uh, tell one body part that they think is beautiful in their bodies in the first day in the second day i want three body parts like you look at like what's the most beautiful part of you and if you ask this for someone um that think they are overweight or that their body is holding more fat than is held for themselves i don't mean that this is changing like a the visual part i really don't care i care about the health i i care of how much you are loving yourself how much you are happy with the way you look so i want people to look themselves and find one body part and in the first day there is many people that cannot answer and they usually if the body is holding more weight that they want they usually go for body parts like my nail or my wrist and that's okay that's completely okay i just want you to find the one body part that you love on your body and even if in the first day you think like i don't love any body part think about one one body part that is nice on your body mm. because where you pay attention probably until now you've been paying attention in the things that you dislike from yourself and we want to build this muscle of looking to the parts that you like on yourself. Because when you start to take one action, you start to feel good and things start to change. So I like to change from the point of joy, from the point of like, I have beautiful eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody say I have beautiful eyes. Or like for me, it's common people say like, you have a beautiful smile. Yeah. So you start there start from the place that people say to you you start from the place that you see and like it and you start to appreciate every day get first day one from then on three body parts and if you can start to change and appreciate not just repeat you can repeat but it would be nice if throughout the days you can start to find other things that you like that's a good start it's a good start it's super simple it looks ridiculous but every exercise I give it should look ridiculous because it should be so easy to apply.
anything different always looks ridiculous until you do it and then you see the benefits and then it's like wow this has been amazing why haven't i been doing this my whole life that is a beautiful exercise i'm gonna do that myself i'm gonna personally i'm gonna do that and i'm going to do what we talked about at the beginning which is when you take that bite truly be with the food that you're eating that is something that i'm going to take away from this conversation because can you can you believe how much we covered in in 50 minutes we covered like every range of the spectrum but guys if you want to dive in more on one specific part of this or if you want to go and devour the whole process then the links are in the description to check out mariana's website as well as her book f the diet how to get off the weight loss roller coaster and lose 1 kilogram per week so mariana i just want to thank you for coming onto the show for sharing your story for sharing your wisdom as well as practical things that we can do in order to not just look better not just be healthier but to feel better about ourselves and to have more energy that we can then give to the people that we love in our life and to do the things that we love in life so mariana thank you so much it's it's been a pleasure chatting with you today thank you it was such a big pleasure i'll talk to you soon thank you whether you are going to look better and you want to look better or you want to feel better or you want to compete in this competition coming up or you just want to be able to look in the mirror and love the person and the reflection that you see looking back at you. I hope that this conversation helped you to achieve any one of those things because Mariana gave it all in this conversation, but she really didn't. I mean, if you want to get all of it, you got to go check out her book. If that's for you, then there is a link in the description to check out Mariana's social profiles as well as to grab her book, F the Diet. I hope that you loved this conversation. I took away a lot myself. I've been into health for a long time now, but I've been fat for more of my life than not. So this is still very much a journey that I'm learning more about every single day. And Mariana definitely helped me to see more of the equation during this conversation. If you found anything helpful and of value to you, Please share this show with just one other person who wants to prioritize their health in this coming year. You're the reason we've grown the way that we have. We don't run ads. We don't have sponsors. We do that because you are the best part of the Be Better team. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. And until we talk again next time, continue to be better.